Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday. This week we're going to be looking at the idea that apple cider vinegar is effective for fat loss or weight loss, and we'll quickly touch on some of its other supposed health claims, uh, things like glucose control, digestion, acne, and tooth whitening. Uh, but before we dig into all that, uh, first, what exactly is apple cider vinegar? So apple cider vinegar is made by basically taking a bunch of apples, just crushing them down, and then squeezing out the liquid. Uh, then you add yeast, which ferments the natural sugars found in the apples, to alcohol. And then you add bacteria, which converts the alcohol to acetic acid, basically vinegar. And this process isn't unique to apples. Uh, you can make vinegar from really any fermentable carb source, including grapes, coconuts, uh, even potatoes, maple syrup, wine, and the list goes on. Now what makes apple cider vinegar special for some of its advocates is the so-called mother. This is basically a stringy goop uh, found in the unfiltered version, uh, which supposedly contains enzymes responsible for some of its health effects. Needless to say, I'm skeptical of this. Uh, to my knowledge, there hasn't been any research done on this uh, mother substance to differentiate its effects from the effects of the actual acetic acid or vinegar component. But I think from a simple physiological standpoint, uh, this mother probably isn't a main player uh, because the proteolytic enzymes found in the stomach would just digest or chop up any of the enzymes in the mother, rendering them inactive. Uh, but besides that, even if there was some other stuff in the mother causing health benefits, uh, it seems that whatever's in there doing the work, or whatever's in there that's good, uh, should be found in greater amounts in an apple to begin with. Um, so again, since there is no research on this, uh, my assumption would be that if there were health benefits in the mother, you could probably get those same benefits from just eating an actual apple, and plus most of the apple cider vinegar that people actually buy doesn't even have the mother in there. Um, so then what we'll focus on in this video is the actual vinegar, since according to most of the research, that's what's most likely to be causing the health benefits of apple cider vinegar. Um, so first, let's focus on fat loss or weight loss. Now there's really only one high quality study done on this, and it's a 2009 study which took 175 obese Japanese subjects and split them into one of three groups. One group got no vinegar, but they made it taste like vinegar to control for placebo effects. Another group got 15 milliliters, so about a tablespoon of vinegar. And the third group got 30 milliliters, so about two tablespoons of vinegar. And they consumed that every day, split between breakfast and supper for 12 weeks. At the end of the 12 weeks, body weight and body fat were significantly lower in both vinegar groups than the placebo group. And this was despite there being no difference in calorie or macronutrient intake between the groups. And this led the authors to conclude that daily intake of vinegar might be useful in the prevention of metabolic syndrome by reducing obesity. And they highlight AMP kinase mediated inhibition of lipogenesis or fat formation as a potential mechanism of action. Um, so here we have a randomized double blind placebo controlled study showing a pretty good effect with a seemingly reasonable mechanism of action. Um, so there could be something to it, uh, but I think there's also a lot of room for skepticism with this study. For one, the subjects were obese, meaning the results may not extrapolate well, if at all, to healthy lean folks. And also when you look at the actual data, uh, even in the high dose group, you still only see a weight drop from about 73 kilograms to 71 kilograms. So just about two kilograms or about four and a half pounds in 12 weeks. And I think that's pretty meager weight loss by any standard. Also in a four week follow up after the study ended, all three groups had just gained all their weight back anyway. And finally, the study used a self-reported diet diary to record energy intake, uh, which is just universally recognized as being notoriously unreliable and inaccurate for calorie reporting. Um, so on the question of weight loss, what we have is a single study in obese subjects showing a pretty modest improvement in fat loss and weight loss, uh, but it's also fairly plagued with limitations. Um, I think it's also worth mentioning this 2013 study here, which showed an increase in satiety or fullness uh, when vinegar was consumed with breakfast. However, these effects were simply based on the fact that it was making people nauseous, and this led the author to discourage its use as an appetite suppressant. Uh, but on my analysis, I would say the most impressive effect of vinegar as its ability to lower blood sugar. This was highlighted in a 2017 meta-analysis looking at 11 studies. And as you can see in the graphs, there was a significant effect for both glucose and insulin response in favor of the vinegar group. And it's worth noting that five of these comparisons did in fact use apple cider vinegar. Uh, but despite impressive results here, 
Uh, these effects are generally larger in subjects with diabetes or insulin resistance, and I think this is where apple cider vinegar probably has its most practical significance. Also, I think it's worth mentioning that apple cider vinegar's anti-glycemic effect appears to be somewhat ironically dependent on the type of carbohydrate you're consuming. It's much more effective when taken with complex carbohydrates, where the glycemic response will be much lower anyway, and it doesn't seem to work really at all in response to simple sugar consumption, where it might actually be quite helpful. And this is due to the fact that it seems to work by inhibiting starch digestion, meaning it's really only going to be effective when you're eating starchy, complex carbohydrates. Um, so this is sort of a catch-22 for apple cider vinegar, uh, when you could probably benefit from it the most, like when drinking, say, sugary beverages, uh, or processed foods, um, it probably isn't going to work. Uh, but again, the antiglycemic effects are pretty impressive and can certainly have relevance for those with insulin resistance, um, but probably not so much for healthy individuals. Now, apparently it can help dry out pimples, uh, but because of the smell and risk of chemical burns, experts recommend using safer and just more effective methods than vinegar uh, when it comes to skincare. Um, it also might help with digestion, insofar as it's possible that the mother is prebiotic, meaning it promotes the growth of healthy bacteria in the gut. But like I alluded to earlier, uh, eating an actual apple is likely to contain much more prebiotics than the mother of apple, and it's also uh, just higher in nutrients in general, uh, including fiber. It's also often claimed that the mother contains probiotic bacteria, However, according to the Vinegar Institute, the mother of vinegar is produced by acetobacteria and also contains acetobacteria, uh, but this line of bacteria just isn't likely to be probiotic. Still, even though the digestive benefits are not well supported in the literature, uh, I would remain open to the possibility that it could be helpful for some individuals and for reasons that perhaps we just don't fully understand yet. Um, but again, whatever those benefits are, I would imagine that they can be found in greater quantities by just eating apples on their own own or using any old vinegar also on its own uh, with apple cider vinegar not actually offering any special benefit in this case. Um, it's also really not smart at all to use it for tooth whitening since the acid in vinegar clearly erodes enamel. Um, there's also no convincing human evidence or support for reduced cancer risk or cardiovascular disease and apparently chemical disinfectants are just simply more effective for house cleaning. So to bring this full circle, I would say that apple cider vinegar and all of its hype is pretty much busted. Uh, this is mostly because the more credible claims around blood glucose and insulin control are just not unique to apple cider vinegar. Just plain old vinegar works just as well. And these benefits might only be relevant to those already with or at risk of disordered glucose control anyway. And despite the fact that there is that one single study in obese subjects showing a slight edge in weight loss, uh, we already know that weight loss is ultimately determined by the balance between the calories you're eating versus those you're expending. And in all of my experience and reading, I've yet to find an effective and legal shortcut around just plain hat diet and exercise. And it may improve feelings of fullness after a meal, uh, but this is simply due to feeling nauseous. Uh, so I would say strategies like just eating higher fiber foods, drinking more water at meals, or simply eating more slowly are more reasonable. And as for all the other stuff, I think just eating an apple is a healthier, more sensible option. Um, so that's going to conclude this one, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching.